Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change a glide kit on your washer. On this particular style of washer, the glide kit is used in conjunction with the motor to provide belt tension. If they wear out and become defective, you may not get good tension on your belts and you will experience slow agitation or slow spin. It's a really easy job to change, so let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we should do is to disconnect power to the washer. So either locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuse, or simply reach behind it and unplug it. Now next we'll need to remove the front panel, and depending on your model, if it has screws that are visible through the front, you'll need to remove those, tilt the panel out. If there are no screws visible, we'll use a putty knife and go at the very bottom of the panel, you'll note that there are two clips, one on either side. We'll just depress those and tilt the panel up. You just take a stiff putty knife, find that clip, and it's just about an inch or an inch and a half in from the edge. Just depress that clip a bit and pop that panel forward. And then while holding upward on it, putting some pressure towards the top, just tilt it out and disconnect the spring clips at the top. We can then set that aside. Now to remove the belts on this style of washer, we'll begin by tilting the machine back. You may need somebody to hold it in place or lean it up against a sturdy surface. And simply roll the belts off the pulleys. And then we can stand the washer back up. Now that we've removed the belts, our next step will be to remove this motor cover. It's held to the side of the cabinet with a 5 16 screw. Just remove it and set it aside. We also have a ground wire attached to the front of the base. We'll need to remove it. Now our next step will be to remove the motor mount from the machine base. These newer style will typically have one screw at the front end and two more inside towards the center of the base. Older machines will have four studs that will go down through that base and you would have to tilt the machine back and remove the four nuts. Now with the motor pulled completely towards the front of the washer, we can then access these two screws in behind. Push the motor forward, access that front screw, and now you can lift that whole assembly away from the base. Just tilt it forward and the pulley will come up through, and just pull it far enough forward that we can remove the individual wires to the motor switch. And just put that harness back out of the way. And next we'll stand the motor up and that will allow us to first of all access the springs and depending on the age of your machine they may be two springs on one side or one on either side. So using a pair of needle nose pliers, just grasp the spring and unhook it from the upper portion of the base. And discard the old springs. Now next we'll need to remove that motor pulley. To do so, we'll need a 3 16 Allen key. Make 
sure the Allen key is fully inserted into that set screw and then give it a sharp wrap. Slide the pulley off and just set that aside. Our next step will be to remove the four nuts that secure the upper motor housing to the motor. Our 3 8 nut and you'll need a fairly deep socket to fit over the studs on the motor. Slide the motor carriage forward to access the second set. Now with all the nuts removed, you can then lift that whole carriage right off of the motor. We'll just set the motor aside for now. And we'll push that lower portion away from the top portion of the motor carriage. And depending on the age of your machine, you may have square glides or round ones. The square one is the replacement for the original, so we're simply going to remove those and discard them. And then just clean up that motor base if there's any debris built up around those pivot points for the glides. And we'll also want to look at the upper portion of that motor base to make sure that there is no corrosion in that area in those channels and if so you'll need to clean that out. Then using the tool of supplied grease we'll lubricate those two areas. Install the four new glides in the lower portion. And put some lubrication on those. Now we'll insert that lower portion into the upper portion, lining up those glides. Make sure it slides freely. Now that we have the glides lubricated, our next step will be to attach the two halves of the motor mount. And the easiest way to remember how it goes together is the two hooks for the spring need to be on opposite sides. So we'll tilt that upper portion up, slide the two halves together, so we have two hooks and two hooks. Now we're ready to put it back on the motor. So locate the ground wire and we'll need to Set the upper portion, the square portion of that motor mount onto the motor. There's no 
it's lined up properly, then you can slide the lower half and line up the studs on the motor. So next we'll reinstall those nuts. Side ones are a little more difficult to line up. find if you just take a pair of needle nose pliers and go into the center of that nut and just hold it on top of it, it will drop down on. Now we're ready to tighten them. Pulley back on. So line up the set screw with the flat portion of the shaft. And the pulley should sit flush with the end of the shaft. Snug it up. And fully insert that wrench. And then give it a sharp tap with a hammer. Now next you're ready to install the new springs and again if your model has two springs on one side make sure that we have both of them on that side. It's easiest to insert the spring from the back side, hook it into the opening. And pull it through from the back and clip it in place. Sure, it moves freely and doesn't stick. So, now before we put the motor back in the washer, we can reconnect the wires. sure they all fit snug. Now when we position the motor back into the washer we want to make sure that these two tabs fit into the slotted holes on the base. Now when putting the motor back in 
make sure that we line those tabs up into those openings, tilt it down into place, and then secure it with the screws. Tighten securely and push the motor forward. Access single screw. And then secure the ground screw. Now we're ready to tilt the washer forward so that we then reinstall the belts. Now to reinstall the belts, we'll start with the larger belt first. And you can either wrap it around the motor or the large pulley first, it doesn't matter. Just rotate it until it's firmly on the pulleys. Now for the pump belt, it sits on the lower portion of the motor pulley. Just drape it around that and then roll it around the pump pulley. Normally that belt is fairly loose, but the motor pulled fully towards the front of the washer. You should be able to almost touch that belt together before it moves the motor. Now we'll put the motor cover back on. Make sure we have the harness wires tucked safely out of the way. And slide that flange over the lip of the cabinet. Position the screw hole. Secure it with the 516 screw. And now we can put the front panel back on. So we'll reinstall that front panel. We'll tuck the top end in first, make sure it's even side to side. We'll keep some pressure up against the top. That will allow those two spring clips to engage. And on this model, we're simply going to press it into place till the clips on the bottom latch. If your model had screws, you would now reinstall those. Now we can push the washer back into place. We're now ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete.